Brian Ratliff here, fly tying manager and guide at Mad River Outfitters. Today we're going to work on dubbing. In a lot of our classes, fly tying classes, even just uh, customers coming into the shop, they ask about dubbing. They really have something, it's really something that they struggle with. And there's lots of materials out, uh, not just the fine wispy beaver dubbings for dry flies or for small nymphs, a lot of the synthetics. Even the whole uh, hype, and not necessarily hype, but all the, the allure of the uh, composite dubbing loop, uh, it's kind of confusing for people just getting started. So we're going to go over today the three main types of dubbing. There's other things you can do. You can combine them together. There's lots of different things, but you have just the straight, just dubbing on thread. We're going to go over the split thread dubbing and also the dubbing loop. So hopefully this will help you out. It takes a little bit of practice. It's not something you're going to get just right off the bat, but we're going to, uh, I'll show you the main things. I'm not going to tie a whole fly. I'm just going to show you how to put the dubbing on the thread and then how to build it up and get the taper that you need. All right. So we're going to put this just a 200 R and put this in the vise here. Have some bright thread just so you can see what's going on. All right, just get that started there. Then some, uh, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with this ice dub. Ice dub is a great dub, dubbing material, but it's a little bit stiff. These wispy tips are what I'm gonna to use to actually start the twist around the thread, and it's actually gonna make yarn. So I'm gonna start with the wispy tips. I'm just gonna start twisting them once I start to see them start to twist, it's going to start to draw the other dubbing up from the sides. All right, so now there's a little bit of gap in there. I got a big gap here. I'm going to take two fingers. I'm going to slide this up. All right, so it looks pretty good. A little bit thick, but it'll, it'll work for right now. All right, there it is around the hook. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. Now I can start building up my body. So with the rotary vise, it's a lot quicker if I'm just doing it by hand. I have a long piece here, so I gotta, it, I gotta make sure I have enough clearance. But you're gonna give a base down, and then you're gonna come back over, wrap over. If, I, if the dubbing starts to come off the thread at any time, twist it and spin, twist, twist it and pull down. And then when you're done with everything, you're gonna pull the dubbing back so you see at least a hook eye length, give a couple wraps, and then you're done. So that is the regular, just the traditional type of dubbing, I don't really know what else to call it, the twist style of dubbing, uh, just twisting on the thread. All right, so let's go over the next type, and that is the split thread. The split thread type of dubbing is very handy, it is extremely strong, and it is a good way to get a little bit thicker material, or maybe you need a little bit thicker body, or you maybe you have a couple different types of materials you need to put in there. It's a, it's a quick way to do that. It's not as not as sturdy as the dubbing loop that we'll show that you'll see here in a second, but it's very quick and very useful. All right, start my thread. All right, so this I am using UTC. This is 140. You can use 70. UTC is a flat thread. It's not woven together, and so by un by untwisting it you need to get your bodkin out at that point i take my bodkin and shove in between the different strands and then separate them by going up and down all right then i'll open that up put my finger in there grab some dubbing put in this dubbing loop hold some tension on the bobbin and then i would just simply just twist it over top makes a rope like that. This is really good way to make a real bushy body that's real quick without having to pick up any other tools. Pull that back at the head there. Now I can pick this out. I can um, trim it down, whatever I need to do to keep that taper. So that's split thread dubbing.
All right, and the final one that we're going to work on today, that I'm going to show you today, is going to be the, utilizing the dubbing loop. I'm going to start my thread. This it helps if you have a little bit more of a thread base there. All right, so with the dubbing loop, I'm going to get about, I don't know, maybe about eight inches of thread out. I'm going to make this little cradle or swing. Then I'm going to go over top of the hook shank, then wrap around this cradle or this swing three times. Two, three, then back up. Go ahead and put my half hitch in right there. Lock that in. The half hitch stops the thread from coming unraveled when I go forward. All right, then I'm going to lay my bobbin here. All right, so with the dubbing loop, I can use um, pretty much anything to hold it. They make some really nice tools, like this Griffin tool here. It's got the spring-loaded arms on it. So what I do is I hook it onto the dubbing loop, and when I give when I give it slack, it opens up. When I give tension, it closes. Makes it really nice. It's heavy, so it can sit down on the desk, and it, it works just fine. Give it some slack. Open up that dubbing loop. Give it some tension. It's just it grabs it right there. So then I can shift it up where I need it to. I'm going to hold onto the thread and just kind of spread it out a little bit. Now what I like to do, I like to grab a hold at the bottom of the dubbing here, give this tool a twist, and then slowly let go with my left hand and it's going to, when I give tension, it's going to slowly twist that dubbing. And that gives me more control. If I just start spinning it, sometimes uh, the material will collapse on itself. Now, if you are if you have a vise that rotates, or, or a rotary vise that doesn't have a bobbin cradle, then you got to use your middle finger. So I'm going to hold this up with my middle finger and rotate this. I'm not flipping you guys off. So here we go. Just spinning this like this. Alright, so this is the tricky part. You're, at, you're done with this. You're done with all your dubbing. You still have a little bit of loop here. So you have to go over top two times and that's going to lock it in. At this point, it's not going to go anywhere. So I could take this off. And by doing that, you just flip the pull it backwards. That's up top. Pull everything back. I'm going to keep that on the top there. Two wraps, three wraps. Then this is my loop, what's left of it. I can cut that off, pull everything back, wrap over top of it twice. So at that point, see it's a little bit bushier of a body. I can pluck this out. I can um, even take, come in with, with a bodkin or something and pick it out more if I wanted to. It's kind of whatever you wanted to do. That is the three main ways of creating a dubbing body or dubbing uh, for any type of nymphs or steelhead flies or pretty much any type of fly that requires the dubbing. You have the three different main, three main methods there. So if you have any questions, feel free to stop in the shop, give us a call. Uh, definitely we go over this in our classes again. Um, it'll take some time, it takes some practice, but keep at it and you'll get it down. So thanks for joining us and make sure you subscribe to our other videos and stay tuned. Thanks.